Okay. Make sure this is fired up. Pop out. Chat. All right, I think we're good. Let's get started. Um, oh, oh, there's a couple things I wanted to do today. Some of it's boring. Let me show you the boring stuff first. I'm going to go to streaming here. ZBrush Female, high res, tech suit detail. So I'm not going to be messing with her today, I don't think. I think I'm done working on her for a minute. We'll, we'll start something else new. I've got some ideas, but I'll let you guys kind of dictate where I go today. Because I think that'll be funner. But in the meantime... I'm going to go into edit mode here, hit F to frame, go into matcap, and you're going to see I have a bunch of odds and ends. If I go into my subtool here, hold down shift, turn everything on, and hit F to frame again. I have a lot of odds and ends in here on the hard surface stuff where I just kind of basically did a quick dynamesh and then just put some details on it and called it a day, uh, which is fine except for when I went to go pose her and transpose master and that, let me move this down here. Uh, that was a little bit trying on my system. Again, I'm working on a laptop here, so it's not as robust as it could be. Uh, but ZBrush handled it like a champ. But in order to kind of help it out a little bit, I'm going through here. And let's see where we left off here. I think it was down here quite a bit. I basically, what I, what I did was I went to Subtool, and then I went to Auto Reorder which is right here. And I basically went from high to low. Now in this case, I had some very high subtools. As far as high, it just means the poly count or the point count up here. Uh, whichever had the highest point count was up top. And I've just been basically going through and just one by one and zero meshing all of the pieces that our, let me see, yeah, stuff like this. So let me see if I can find out where I left off. I didn't realize I had, Okay, so if I go down through here and hit F to frame, F to frame, there we go. So now this one here is Z remeshed already. There we go. So I think this is where I left off. So I hit F to frame, and you don't even have to be in your document. You hit F to frame. You can just hit F, and it'll go ahead and frame. Here, you also notice if you hit F to frame once, it's going to frame the bounding box of your entire object, even if it's invisible. And if you hit F again, it'll frame just that um, object here. So this one looks like it's already done have to frame all right so say actually was this one done yeah okay so see how this one doesn't have any subdivision history and it's just a fairly blocky mesh if you go back here it's fine uh, but what you can do is go ahead and duplicate this off so now i've got my duplicate i want to hide everything because i'm going to be doing projecting so i'm going to hold down shift turn off that eyeball to turn all my subtools off and then what i can do is with this one selected let's go ahead and just go to our zero mesher which for you guys will be under geometry Zero mesher here, and then hit zero mesher. Target polygon count of five is fine, just to begin with. And I have X turned on, so it'll be symmetrical across the X axis. Hey everybody, hey Blance, hey Seagull, thanks for showing up. Like I said, uh, if you missed uh, the first ten seconds of the show, I'm going to be doing a little bit of boring stuff to start off with, and then I'm going to switch it up. I'm just kind of going through some house cleaning here. So if, what I can do at this point is I can go ahead and simplify this shape a bit if I want to. I can drop that adaptive size down which will give me more even quads and less geometry at the expense of possibly, you know, finding the edges as well. Or I can go in here and just hit half and zero mesh this down if I want to, just to get a, a smoother shape. Now, in order to project back to another subtool, I'm in solo mode right now, but there's nothing else showing because I hold held down shift and turn off that eyeball. If I want to project anything else, I need to turn on the eyeball for the previous mesh here that I duplicated off, which again, if I select that one and go into solo mode, it's just this dynameshed shape, basically. So I've got this one selected. I'm going to go to turn on the eyeball. So I've got this one selected, this eyeball on. I need that eyeball on. I don't have to be out of solo mode. I can be in solo mode and have the eyeball on. It'll project just fine. Uh, but you do need some another uh, object turned on. If you don't, project all is going to be grayed out because it's not going to project to anything. So eyeball on. And this one doesn't need the eyeball on either. It just needs to be selected. And then we'll go to project all, which for you guys will be under subtool project all here. And then I hit control D to subdivide, project all, control D to subdivide, project all. And now I've got that original shape pretty good. Now I've also got the uh, poly paint on this original shape, which if I wanted to save a step, I would just have this poly paint on while I project it. And it would ask me, hey, do you want to project poly paint information from this subtool because it's visible? Uh, since I didn't have that brush turned on, it's not going to ask me because it doesn't see it. 
So with colorize turned on, I can just sample this color in the meantime. I can go down here, I can do my shortcut for fill color, which is control alt F. So we've got a color fill object here. You're going to see that's alt control F. That's a hotkey I made. And in order to make a hotkey, just control alt tap any button and then give it your key combination. And there you go. And then of course you want to go to preferences. Oh, waiting for my brain to kick in. Preferences, uh, hotkeys, store. And then if you didn't make any other interface changes, go to config, store config, and that'll store your configuration every time you start up ZBrush. Speaking of that, there's also something else I want to do. So I've got this one I don't need anymore. So go ahead and hit delete. Okay. Now this one I've got selected. It's all filled and colored and it has subdivision history. At this point also, I can go in here. Uh, I don't need the colorize on anymore. So I'm going to turn that colorize off and I can go over here to white. And now because it's a Ziri mesh, it's going to, let's also hit X to go across X symmetry here. You can go through here and you can hold down, you can hold down shift to smooth and you know, all that Dynamesh kind of flavor in there from all the little bumpy edges and stuff. It just makes it a much nicer mesh to work with. So you're kind of getting two benefits to using Ziri mesh or is number one, a much nicer sculptable mesh, as well as the ability to, which is more important when I'm transpose mastering is going down here to subdivision level one and having a much simpler mesh. So this one's only 6,000 with the high res being at a uh, hundred thousand. So that was kind of a roundabout way to get that detail in there. So let's do one a little bit faster. So I've got this one selected here. I'm going to hit F to frame it. And you're going to see again, this is just a very simple object. So this one's ready, primed and ready for um, a Ziri mesh. And actually, if I go out of solo mode here, let's turn everything else on. So hold down shift, turn the eyeball on. Okay, so this is just a front piece here. Uh, everything looks fine. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this off real quick with this one selected. I'm just going to go into my Z remesher. Well, I'll do it the right way here. Geometry, Z remesher, target polygon count is fine. Go ahead and hit Z remesh. I have X turned on. So when it does it, it's across X symmetry. If this is too many polygons, it did 11,000 um, points here. You can always just go to half Z remesh again, and that'll be fine. That'll be 7,000. So at this point, I'm going to need to turn the eyeball on for the other one. And again, I'm in solo mode, but it doesn't matter as long as I have these selected. If you want to, you can go out of solo mode here, go to project all, which for you guys will be project all, subdivide, control D, project all. And the reason I like to be in solo mode is so I can see the re end result without having to have it covered up a little bit by the other tool here. Control D, project all. And now I've pretty much got the object back. Now, again, a lot of this kind of aliasing and stuff is an artifact from the original low res Dynamesh. So, Let's turn on the colorize, hit C to sample that color here. Just hover over your object, hit C, that'll sample your color. Delete that, grab this one, hotkey for color, fill object. And now that I've got this one, I can turn the poly paint off with colorize, go back to white. And now I can hold down shift. I've got smooth here, and then I can just do a very light smooth. If it's too smoothing too heavy, hold down shift and just drop that Z intensity down. And you can just kind of go in here and just do a really light smooth just to kind of ease those transitions just a bit. This gives you a little bit of a nicer surface. Gets rid of some of that Dynamesh artifact. Which again, Dynamesh is super powerful. I love using it, but um, it can sometimes leave a little bit of artifact behind. Especially when you're not working at a super high resolution, which I tend not to when I'm using Dynamesh. So this one's done. I'm just going to go to this next one here. And this next one already has subdivision, so I can skip it. If I want to see it, I can hit F to frame and just hit that down arrow, F to frame down arrow, F to frame, down arrow, F to frame. All these ones already have subdivision history until I hit to this one. Now, I'm going to go stop here. How's everybody doing? Um, any questions? Blands asks, under subtool menu, there's a remesh button. Is this the same as Z remesher? No, but we can talk about that one. Let us talk about that one. I'm going to go, okay, first I'm going to hold on shift, turn everything back on, go out of solo mode, hit F. And now I've got our whole object here. Now remesher is actually, I'm trying to remember the last time I used remesher. Mm. Remesher is really useful if, you know when you dynamesh something and it, and it finds those little crevices, those little cracks and it makes holes and does some really weird stuff sometimes. Remesher is a good substitute for dynameshing your object to get a single envelope and then projecting to get like a high res envelope from your object. So let's do a little bit of that. Um, I want to take something a little bit simple, not simple, just something for demo purposes. Oh, and I also want to save this. I'm going to go ahead and save this as eight. And I'm going to go ahead because I'm, I'm simplifying all of her little pieces down. So when I go to pose her out later, it won't be trying to pose an eight million polygon mesh down. 
So in order for us, let's go ahead and take, uh, I'm trying to think of, okay, here we go. We're gonna take these pieces back here. So if I take this piece, hold down shift, shoot it to the top, and then this piece, and then this piece, and then this piece, and then all, I'm just alt tapping down through here. I'm just gonna take these top pieces here, and then with these top pieces, I'm gonna hold down, uh, I'm gonna turn down, hold down shift, turn off the eyeball, and then hit this name plate to turn the eyeball back on. I'm just gonna touch that eyeball all the way down until I get all those pieces showing. With all these pieces visible, I'm gonna go ahead and do a merge visible. And if I'm not gonna be using these anymore, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all. Now with this merge visible selected, I'm gonna shoot it down to our, I'm just gonna, just so I know where it is in space, I'm gonna go to deformation to unify. And that's gonna put it right down smack dab at my zero, zero, zero in ZBrush. And uh, if I wanna be Z forward, I can go ahead and just mirror this in the Z. So let's talk about remesh. Okay, there's a couple different scenarios I wanna do for this thing. Let's say in a world, I want to make a version of this object that is just all one solid piece. And then I wanna Z remesh it. And then I want to uh, project that detail back. So first I'm gonna do is duplicate this thing off. Now. If I were to Z-remesh this right now, it would Z-remesh all of these pieces separately, right? So what I have to do is I have to go over here to Dynamesh. Let's go to, a, let's go to the menu. You guys will know where it is. Dynamesh down here, and I can go I turn off blur. I can keep project on if I want to do a lower res with a little bit more detail, but I'll go ahead and keep project off. And we'll just see how 128 does. We'll hit Dynamesh. And if I go into solo mode here, you're going to see this is the result of that Dynamesh. It's all one solid piece here. If you wanted more detail, just undo that. Raise this resolution just a bit. Hit Dynamesh. Turn off blur. Raise the resolution a bit. Hit Dynamesh. And you're going to see, okay, now it's Dynameshed. And if I go in here and smooth, you're going to see this is all one contiguous piece. I'm going to go here to smooth stronger. So now that I have one contiguous piece here, now when I Z-remesh, uh, for example, if I hit X to go across that symmetry, and we go in here to Z-remesher, It'll go ahead and Z-remesh this entire object and everything's fine. Now, if there's ever a case where that doesn't work or Dynamesh is acting weird, there is a remesh option. So two differences between Z-remesh and remesh. Number one, you see how Z-remesh completely just demolished my original mesh. Remember when I duplicated this off from my original? I kept the original around just so I can get the detail to project back to. With this one here, um, so this is all one contiguous mesh now. Um, when I duplicated it off and I hit Z remesh, it completely just eradicated my original object here. But I can now go hit Control D and then project all, and there we go. So nice, right? Now let's say Dynamesh isn't working. What you can now do, if you want, is you can go and you can remesh this object. Now I don't have to get rid of this original one. If I Z remesh this one right now, it'll Z remesh this object. I got nothing to go back to. But with remesh, then you'll also notice. When it eradicated that geometry, it was under the geometry subpalette. That's generally what geometry subpalette does is it changes your geometry. It has uh, geometry modified topology. It has geometry panel loops, edge loops. This, these are things that are going to take your geometry and modify it. Um, if you go to subtool, these are things that are going to create new subtools in your stack generally so, or modify subtools you know, by projecting and stuff. So you're going to see that remesh is actually in the subtool palette because when I hit remesh, you're going to see there's remesh, there's a resolution, there's polish and all that good stuff. Uh, you're also going to see X symmetry is on X, Y, and Z. So if your object is symmetrical across the X, even if I don't have symmetry turned on by tapping X, um, it'll go ahead and remesh. And then when I go up here, you're going to see, oh, I have a new remesh object in my in my stack here. Now, most things in ZBrush 4R8, when you do an operation like extract or duplicate, it will, or append, it'll go ahead and select that subtool. Uh, I guess remesh, they don't do that. But we can go ahead and select remesh, and you're going to see this is my, my result. So this is my resulting remesh mesh. And you're going to see it looks a lot like I just dynameshed it. But what it basically did was just coat my object in a blanket of uh, quad. So now if I take this one and do a project all, Oh, shoot. So if I go into solo mode here, you're going to see it just projected back. I can subdivide this one. I can project all. And I'm just projecting between these two. Now, you also might notice there's a few little places where it's not doing so hot. Pretty easy to fix. All you got to do is let's go back to, let's just undo. 
So right before we project it here. So if the first thing we do is project all. That's going to project our blanket. It's basically, it looks like a DynaMesh. It's just a DynaMesh that's, that creates a blanket around our object as a new subtool here. And if you notice anything, if I go into solo mode here, and then I hop back and forth, you're going to see like, oh, it's leaving some artifacts behind. Just go into BZ. P, that's your Z project brush, turn off RGB, have Z sub, or have your Z add on or whatever. Hold down shift and smooth this out. And then use your Z project brush. Let's go out of solo mode here. And you can hold down alt and you can let go of alt and you can kind of just brush up and brush down to kind of dictate like, oh, there's a little artifact there. So you can kind of go through here and it's camera based. So you're gonna want to be a little bit careful. And I would also suggest not going across the X axis because if you do and you're over here projecting and then you go out of solo mode, you might see some shearing happening across. Let me see if I can get it to happen here. Yeah, it's, it's going to do some weird stuff pulling across. And also, you're going to want to make it camera-based, so you're going to want to be careful anyway. Uh, but we can go through here and just use the Z Project brush to kind of get rid of any of these artifacts here. There we go. So now that it's looking better, I can go in here. Oh, see, here we go. See, like this thing over here with X turned on, it'll start doing that. So not great. Now, if I want to, I can do a mirror and weld, which is geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. Um, however, when I mirror and weld it, you're going to see, ah, I got the garbage on this side. So you're going to want to go to deformations, mirror, and then mirror and weld. And now you've got a nice mesh with all these things happening. Hit, now you can hit control D and project all, and that'll start projecting your mesh back. So like I said, you know, it's not great geometry. It's the DynaMesh-ish geometry. Uh, in fact, it, it looks just like DynaMesh, which is basically like taking a cube and just projecting whatever resolution of geometry you want or have onto your object here. Uh, but if DynaMesh is ever not working, it's a good alternative just to kind of give you DynaMesh Geo without having to use DynaMesh for whatever's visible on your screen. And remember on this original object here, um, it was a bunch of pieces, but they were all... Uh, separate pieces, you, these can actually be, let's do this, let's go ahead and delete that. There's one more thing about this. Hold on, control shift, I'm gonna isolate this one. I'm just making sure that these are all one poly group. I don't have any stragglers because if I run a group split on this one, or you can just do, you know what, let's just do a split to similar parts, just to play it safe. Okay, now that we did a split to similar parts here, we can, as long as they're all visible, I can go down here to remesh all across the x-axis, a axis, <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and remesh. I, of course, I can change my resolution. The polish there makes its own, you know, you'll keep your poly groups, all that good stuff. You can have those options available, but it'll shoot that right down here at the bottom. And now I can just do a project all, it'll project to all visible. And I'm kind of back to where I started. So you don't even have to merge these things down to make one contiguous mesh, which maybe that's useful to you also. If you don't want to merge something and then dynamesh it and then remesh it or project or anything, that could be an option for you. Uh, Siegel asks, do you have a video on the 3D Print Hub STL exporting scale control? No, and I don't do that very often, so I'm hesitant to start acting like I do, but I can, um, let's see, so we can go to Z plugin. I use, ST oh, I don't use the STL exporter. I use the STL importer for when I'm doing stuff like uh, the Fusion 360 stuff, but STL export I don't really use. So if we go to, oh, this reminds me too. Okay, so this is one more thing I need to do. So 3D Print Hub, you're going to see export the STL and import STL. So if you are you are in um, a, a auto or a CAD program, and sometimes you can hop back and forth with STL files, uh, really useful for importing STL files for use in ZBrush. Um, export to STL, export options here. Yeah, you've got this size ratio here. I will say so under Z plugin, under there's the new scale master. Super interesting. I don't tend to worry too much about this just because what I usually end up working on is pretty abstract. I don't work on real life stuff all that often. So it's been a while, but I do know, speaking of these plugins, there are new on Pixel Logic's channel here on their YouTube channel, Pixel Logic YouTube. I want to say recently they just updated a bunch of their videos. Ask ZBrush. Change visibility. Ooh, there's a new Ask ZBrush I missed. D 
do, 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 ZBrush plugins. Okay, so there's a ZBrush plugins playlist here in the YouTube channel, and it's got uh, Z Repeat It, which I want to go over this morning. Uh, Z Startup Master, Z, Scale Master. So there's a Scale Master right in there. That'll probably, I'm sure Joseph Druster or somebody does this, it's going to do a much better job than I would off the cuff. And then you can use this before you use the 3D Print Hub, or the 3D Print Hub probably has a bunch of cool stuff built in. So uh, size options, bounding box access to origin. Mm -hmm, hmm. Interesting. When I do hop back and forth between CAD programs, I would probably maybe use this a little bit more. Maybe. Import, certainly. That's interesting, though. Unfortunately, I don't know too much, but... Okay, so uh, Seagull says, I tend to end up exporting a bigger object, turn on rigs and the bracelets. Gotcha. Yeah, so check that out. I, they would be able to walk you through that. But speaking of ZBrush plugins, I'm missing a couple that I want that I use at work a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of ZBrush here. And we talked about that. Okay, so let's go back into, I'm going to Google Pixel Logic Downloads. And if you go to the Pixel Logic Download Center, here and we're going to go to zbrush plugins so you're going to see a bunch of plugins that come automatically with r8 so we're fine we already got all those what i do want is the employee created plugins here so uh, and i want to go ahead and uh, the stuff i use a lot uh ringmaster might be interesting if you're doing bracelets and stuff ring band precise dimensions and stuff seagull maybe that's cool um so now we got nano tile textures here download and then uh z cnc no, Startup Master, no. Panel Loops Master, yes. Clean Tool Master, yes. Z Repeat It, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and download all these. And then I'm going to go to my download folder here. And I'm going to open a yoink. ZBrush 4R8. Z. Okay, so when we're in uh, C Program Files, Pixel Electric ZBrush 4R8, we're going to go to Z Startup. Z plug 64, 64 bits. And now what I can do is I can just take the download zip file here. I can, I should be able to just right click, drag over here. I have heaven zip installed, so I can just do extract here. And what it should do now, unfortunately, Z repeat it goes to a Z repeat install folder, which means I need to take these two folders out of here. Control X to cut and then go back to this base folder, this root folder here, and then paste that. So I think that's the only weird one. And then I need to go back to Z repeated install, delete that folder. Now for like clean tool master, panel loop presets, nano tile, I should be able to just right click here, seven zip, extract here. And that should go ahead. It's gonna put, give you an underscore R8 folder out here and then a ZBrush script down here. So now with all those installed, we can go into ZBrush, open that up. And now I should have some new Z plugins we can play with. Some very useful Z plugins. Question from Kalina. Hello, what's with Houdini? What is with Houdini? Um, I think last week we went over the GoZ Houdini plugin, which is basically work in ZBrush. And then, you know, you can use GoZ. If you hit this little GoZ button right here, let's make a poly mesh here so it's, it's available to us. As long as you have a poly mesh available, you can hit go Z and then in, you can go Z from from ZBrush if you want to go from ZBrush to 3D Studio Max, Maya, whatever. Uh, that, that, that'll that shoot it over there. And I was just showing the functionality of the new go Z to Houdini. And then back again, and we did some fun stuff in Houdini like the the arbitrary mesh vector displacement map and taking a dog and shattering it on the ground. <laughs> that was fun. But... And those are just very basic functionality of Houdini. And the reason why I do basic functionality in Houdini is because I don't really know that much. I need to use it more. But I'll go ahead to Z plugin. You're going to see we now have Z repeat it. Uh, what else did we want to talk about here? Panel loops master. Did that one install? That was a good one. Do, 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 do. Maybe there was a cleanup. Where's the cleanup at? Hmm, let me do a double check here. Maybe I messed it up. Luckily, it's pretty easy to fix. ZBrush 4R8, Z Startup, Z Plug 64. Oh, okay, so clean master install, okay. Okay, cut that out, paste that here. I, I lied. 
Uh, for our array, all right, all right, nanotiles. So these all do an install folder. Blah. Paste. Install. Panel of precepts. X. There we go. Now, there's a better way to do this. Sculptio data. So the data folders are fine. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Home page data. Okay. Z repeat it for our eight. So that one's fine. Okay. Let's do this again. Sorry about that. Now we'll restart ZBrush. Yeah, so these should all be updated with the new version. So that's cool. Yeah, so panel loop presets kind of fell off the face of the earth for a minute there. So let's talk about that one, because that's a cool one. I think Chivang and uh, Joseph Drust worked on that one, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll take a sphere, go into edit mode, go into matte cap here, turn on polyframe. Make a polymesh 3D. So panel loop presets here. If we go over here now, we will have some new Z plugins. So you're going to see here, there's panel loop presets. You open that up, you click that. You're going to see a bunch of presets in here. Uh, you can make your own custom presets, but if you want to go ahead and use these, uh, you can just take any of these and go ahead and hit it. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that because I don't have any panel loops available. So the basics of panel loops is you're going to want to hold down control, mask this thing out, go over here to, uh, where is it at? Geometry, edge loop. Here's where you're loop options are and uh, edge loop mass borders a good one if you want to just kind of make a quick ma uh, loop around whatever you have masked it'll make a nice clean slice through there so that's a cool one to kind of keep your eyeball on uh, and once you have that now you can do panel loops and of course the panel loop options here you can make the thickness a little bit more you can change your bevel a little bit more you can change the bevel profile you can change the number of loops that happen all sorts of cool stuff the amount of polish that happens here if you really want to polish this object out with open circle here you can do that. Uh, you can make it, it's double right now. So hold down control shift, do control shift A, which is visibility grow all. It'll have its own little piece kind of chopped out of here. Or we can undo that and we can go into turn double off, do panel loops. And now when you do control shift, control shift A, it's going to grab the whole object because if you go in here and smooth, it is all one object. It just gives you a little panel loop. So it looks like a little cushion. Uh, you can also do like compound shapes here. So we can do like, okay, let's do a panel loops with double on. So we got panel loops here. We can grab this panel loops here and isolate this one. Now I can just go through a slice and just slice this thing up. And now it's just these visible. We can turn double off, do panel loops. And you know what? Let's do polish. Let's do a little less thickness here, a little less bevel. And polish, 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 double off. I guess that'll work. So we'll go ahead and do uh, just hit panel loops. And now control shift, control shift A. We panel loops this one double on. So it's all a single mesh. And then we did these ones without double on. So now what I can do is I can just go into my deformation polish menu and just polish this down. And now it looks like we've got little cushions on top of this object here. So you can do like compound panel loop shapes. Uh, of course, this is all available to you if you want to go. Let's go ahead and isolate this one out. So we're going to do Control shift A, so this is all one object here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that inner shell here. So hold down control shift, select this outer one. Uh, you know what, let's go, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Control shift, control shift A, we're gonna go ahead and split hidden, which is under your subtool split menu. And now on this one, we're gonna hold down control shift, isolate that outer group, go ahead and delete hidden. So now you got a big hole over here. And now also, if you wanna slice through here, we're gonna hold down control shift. Let's go to slice circle center. Oh, we don't have one. So we're gonna go into hold down a control shift. We're gonna do square center. So that'll give us a perfect circle. Now it's gonna slice all the way through our object. If we don't want that, we're gonna to need to, I can keep slice circle selected. I can hold down control shift if we wanna get rid of visibility on this side. Control shift, tap control, hold down alt, and it'll go ahead and get rid of that. Of course, if you got circle center, it's gonna behave a little bit erratically. So we're gonna go over here, tap control, hold down alt, that'll get rid of this side. Now I still have slice circle available to me. We can slice to this one side, bring it back, hold down control shift and tap. And now we just slice to the one side. And of course you can also go in here to slice curve and you can slice a curve through here. And you can also, if you want to like do a border on that one, hold that control shift, space bar, B radius. That's going to be a brush radius. And that'll go ahead and add a radius, however thick your brush is. So with all these slice options available, or, you know, go in here and hold down control and then do your uh, edge loop mass border. A lot of different ways to skin a cat in this program, obviously. So once you have this, you can hit panel loops with double on, and now you have uh, these panel loops. Now let's say we wanted to panel loops this in a very specific way with presets. So let's go ahead and instead of doing a sphere, let's do a sphere. 
If it ever does this, just hit control line to clear your canvas, go to dot stroke, and then go to drag rack, and there you go. So uh, if I want to replace this, all I need to do, there's a couple different ways to do this. I can go to like say a custom uh, menu here. I can hit W and I can just cycle through these. I can change my mesh. So I can go like brush, insert, primitives. I have my own, so I don't use this one very often. Multi-mesh primitives here, and then I can just hit W to bring up my gizmo up, and then I can just cycle through these different shapes. Uh, you can also just completely go to initialize Q cube. That's what I like to do a lot. It just gives you a simple cube here with whatever divisions you have. And now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and do a deformation unify. Let's take a look at this thing. So if I want to get like a nice beveled edges on here, uh, instead of hitting D to go, you know, we're going to go into dynam dynamic sub div and you can go through here with your Z modeler brush BZM and we can go like hover over this edge and we can go to like insert single edge loop and you kind of like start sharpening all these edges up if you want to. Um, what I prefer to do is do something like, so when we hit D we turn on dynamic, that's going to be smooth subdivisions by default. If you turn that to zero, nothing's happening. Uh, but you can turn on Q grid here, we'll turn that to a resolution of one. And now you can do your different coverage here. So you can kind of start getting that kind of geometry. And you can Q-Grid uh, multiples if you want to. Or you can do a mix of Q-Grid and smooth subdivision. And that'll kind of start smoothing it out. And then, of course, you can change your coverage and stuff. So let's do Q-Grid of 2 just to kind of maintain those edges a little bit more. And a smooth subdiv of 1. Let's do a Q-Grid of 3. There we go. So we're getting a pretty nice compact uh, cube here. So... I'd say we want to slice through this. Now, of course, if we try to slice through this now, it's going to, it'll do it, but it's going to be on that preview mesh of my dynamic Q grid, and that's really not what I want. And also, I had control shift uh, B radius turned on, so it sliced through here. Uh, I want to go ahead and apply these so I can have them for real. So again, I can hit apply here, and now all of that has been converted to actual geometry with subdivisions because I had smooth turned on the two. Um, now, if I try to do it now, it's going to yell at me that I have subdivision levels. So go ahead and delete lower. And now I just have geometry here. So let's say I want to use cut through here and make like a little box. So I'm going to go through here with slice. I'm going to go ahead and control shift, tap alt once. And we can go ahead and just slice through our mesh like this. Um, if I panel loops this now, all those different things here, which isn't a bad thing if this is what you're going for here. We're going to go to geometry, edge loop. If we do a panel loops now, it's going to take every single one of those poly groups and make it into a panel loops here. So if that's what you're looking for, by all means, go for it. Um, if it's not, before you slice, hit control W, make it all one poly group here. And now we can just kind of slice through our little sci-fi box here. Now with that slice on there, you can go to panel loop presets and let's say, what do I want that transition between those, that, those two poly groups to be? Um, if I wanted to kind of pop out, I can hit that panel loop preset there hit accept, and it went ahead and popped it out for me. Now, if it didn't do exactly what you wanted, you can hit control Z to undo. Still kept all your settings over here. So you can go through here and be like, you know what? I don't want to polish that much. Let's turn that down to like, let's try a closed circle. That won't destroy my form. Uh, and then we just hit panel loops again. And there we go. So there's our new panel loops with that new setting. Or you can turn polish off. You can make your thickness a little bit more, change your bevel, all that good stuff. And if you're happy with this one, you can now save this panel loop preset as one of these saved presets down here. <clears throat> so you can just hit replace preset and that'll just go ahead and accept, uh, maybe not, replace preset. And then, okay, so panel loop presets for eight, you can save it in here and then you can give it a name and that'll go ahead and do that replace preset here whenever it's done. There we go. So whatever we did, it'll go ahead and replace that. I don't use that very often, but let's go ahead and undo this if we can. Oh, it went ahead and let's, oh, we replaced that. That's right. Let's do this again. Okay. One more time, twice as fast. Q cube. And we're going to go to deformation unify and we're going to go to dynamic subdivs. Q grids already set up the way we want. Go ahead and apply that. And now we're going to go to delete lower. So hit control W, make this all one, go through here, slice this, and we'll do the panel loop presets. Let's say we wanted to kind of divide in a little bit or like go in and make like this kind of shape. Just click that one, accept the, accept the preset. And now we have this object right here. We can hold down control shift, control shift A. You're going to see we had double turned on. And now we've got two like little sci-fi 
panels in here. So if you wanted to try that on a different shape, let's go ahead and grab a sphere, make poly mesh 3D, and we could use, just go through here, and again, we could just, it slice is fun, right? We'll go through here, and then we'll do a slice circle here. So we got some panels on there. Go to our presets. Let's say we wanted to go in, but not quite as, as, as loose in here, so we can kind of do more of a tight profile here. Hit yes, and now it's gonna be like this. Control shift, control shift A, and now we've got all these different pieces. So if I was to go to split to similar parts here, or split the parts, you're gonna see we now have this piece, this piece, and this piece, all panel loops up. We can hold down Alt and tap through here, and there you go. So you can do panel loop presets, which is a cool one. Um, that's a good one. One thing I also use a lot is this Clean Tool Master. So Clean Tool Master, you, the functionality in here can also be achieved with the Z Repeat It. So basically Z Repeat It is you know, if you ever go down here, so we have all these different pieces, right? If we go down here to deformation and I hit you, that's something we could do. Let's go ahead. Let's see if this will work. So we're going to go to uh, inflate. Let's say we want to inflate this subtool by 44 and we want to do it to all my other subtools. We can go repeat to other and then I go ahead and go through and deformation inflate all my other uh, subtools here. I can also go to like unify and then repeat to other. And then I'll go ahead and just unify all of my meshes, all that kind of thing. Um, that kind of functionality is built into Z Repeat It. So what you can do is basically, I think if I Mac, what did I use it for? Uh, 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 polygroup visible, maybe. So you're going to see you have a bunch of polygroups here. So let's try this. I'm going to select this one here, going to solo mode. Uh, let's say I want to make this all one polygroup. So what I'm going to do is hit record new. And I'm going to go down here to polygroup, group visible, and now I'm going to hit end recording. I'm going to name this group visible. And now my subtool open here. I can go, uh, I can repeat to visible. I can repeat to all. I can repeat to selected. So let's go ahead and repeat to all. And now when I go through here, you're going to see all of my subtools now have our polygroup visible because I recorded an action, I ended it, I saved it, so now group visible is available to me in here. There's, you see there's some default ones in here. Um, and even then, some of this functionality is also in Z plugin. Um, Subtool Master has a lot of like, um, I don't know if it has polygroup stuff, but it certainly has like, you can go in here and you can fill, materials you can you can do visible what's the word do visible you can like turn off all the layers um reconstruct subdivision on all your on all visible all this cool stuff you can do you can actually now do on your own here in z repeat it just record it save it name it and then you have do selective visible all all available to you just to kind of use that um, but one thing i do do is a lot of is i delete so this is a clean tool mask. You can go through here and delete all your morph targets, store morph targets for all the things, bake all your layers, delete all your layers. All of this will be like, you can either delete it for this individual subtool or visible subtools on this button or all of your subtools here. Uh, so while I'm working here and I'm masking and extract, not masking, extracting, but like making different subtools and splitting them off and like going through here, let's say we want to like dynamesh this thing here. Let's do this. So I'm in here. I'm going to go to... I'm going to dynamesh this thing. I'm going to hold down control shift. We're going to slice and we can go through here and kind of slice this thing up. And then we can turn groups on with dynamesh. And then we can go through here and uh, isolate this one. Let's go ahead and like slice this one like this. And then with groups turned on, we can slice through here. Let's say I want to isolate this one. Control shift drag, tap control to do invert visibility. Control W, bring everything back, turn groups off, dynamesh this. Oop, I'll keep groups on for a minute. Dynamesh this together. And now we have one single solid piece, right? And that's cool. Now let's say I want to take this piece and make it into its own subtool. Diff bunch of different ways to do that. I'll just isolate it and do split hidden. So now I've got these two subtools. Go ahead and delete these. Delete. Delete. So now that I've got these two, whenever I split something, um, I'll have some undo history that goes back to like, oh, this was actually a part of a bigger piece. If I don't care about that, and it can sometimes lead to a little bit of instability, what I can do now is I can go to... Where is it at? Delete UVs. Delete UVs is a good one. If you're not using UVs, you can just go through and it'll delete all your UVs, kind of clear out your subtools that way. Um, 
undo delete. So this will delete history from all visible and this will undo undo history from all subtools. So if I just want to go through all my subtools and delete my undo history, I can just hit this one and now I've got, you see both of these no longer have undo history. So instead of like, you know, doing a quick save and loading up my quick save from my recent, I can just do that. So very useful and you can throw these uh, paste TM rig from memory. Why is that there? Interesting. Um, you can go through here if you want to, let's say we want to go to preferences, uh, config, we're going to get enable customize. I'm going to hold down control alt, get rid of this one here. Let's say I use this so often, I want to go ahead and do uh, undo delete all. I'm just going to throw this right here. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I had over here. There's a couple I had over here too at work that I use a lot, but let's say we like that. Go to preferences, uh, turn off enable customize. I'm going to get rid of Z plugin over here. Take that brush menu. That's what I like. And then now I can go to preferences, store config, and now this will always be here if I want to just go up here and just tap that. Of course, now I can assign this to a hotkey. Just do control alt, tap this one, give it a hotkey assignment, and then you can just do that on the fly. Cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Um, how's your for I have a friend who told me to ask if you're still able to add edge loops using your neat uh, control, shift control transpose trick. Um, you are able to. So transpose hasn't changed at all. So if we go over here, now that's not to say Gizmo doesn't have some of the same functionality. So we got a cylinder 3D here, going to edit mode, make polymesh 3D. So you can go, uh, let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? I'm just going to go to group by normals. This is under your polygroup menu. And now you have different polygroups here. So if I want to, I can hit W. I can control tap this polygroup to just isolate this one. And now if I hold down control and drag up, you're going to see it's going to be adding edge loops. Um, unfortunately for the gizmo, I pretty sure if I hold down, if I go into like scale mode and then hold down control and scale it in, it's not going to want to give me an edge ring. So all I got to do is hit Y. I've got transpose back and now I can just use this as usual. So I can hold down control, bring in an edge ring, bring in another edge ring, um, bring in another edge ring or just, you know, pull that in a little bit more, bring this down. And so I can continue to add edge rings with the transpose line, which never went anywhere. It's just hidden under Y to toggle that on and off, or you can just toggle this button. So Gizmo, I don't, I can't get it to do a scale. So if I hold down control, tap this polygroup to isolate it. There you go. And then if I go, uh, like go into scale mode and then control shift or control drag, it won't do it. All I gotta do is hit Y. W, Y, oh, whoops, I went out of edit mode here. W, Y, not T, to toggle transpose, grab this one, control drag, and then, oh, make sure you're in scale. There you go. And now you can use control shift with move and bring this up. Did it unmask it? Weird. Okay, yeah, so control shift to bring this up, and then we can, like, scale this in a little bit without bringing an edge ring. And now if I want to bring an edge ring here, if I do an edge ring now, it's going to want to kind of go down to where that pivot point is. So I'm going to want to reset that pivot here just by tapping and then I can control drag in and then W to bring this down like so. So still there, just got to use transpose line. Uh, Seagull will repeat it plugin work for making multiple actions in macros. JD mentioned something about one plugin being canceled by another in script sequences. I'm not sure if it's clear though, my bad. Uh, when it gets into scripting, I'm a little bit, probably not your guy to go to. I do very simple stuff. Same thing in Photoshop, same thing in Maya. I can copy things from the uh, control panel copy paste, repeat some actions, do a little bit of cleanup, but nothing too crazy. Same thing in here. If I go up here to like macro, here's where you can like record your macros or you can go over here to the Z script and you can record your Z script here. Uh, and once you do that, that'll bring up a, uh, I'm trying to think, a notepad file that you can go in and you can like kind of clean it up and type in some more stuff and you know order of operations and like basic programming stuff so when you go through your script it's not going to do anything weird uh that kind of stuff i'm not i can't dive too deep into but um yeah i would i would say i and i I'm, for the repeated stuff you can do multiple repeats if you are running into a problem where you're like 
going through here and recording a bunch of stuff and then you repeat it and then for some reason you, you go through and an action up here will kind of have a bad what am I looking for here it'll it'll make it behave a little bit awkwardly or incorrectly or have unintended consequences you can you know just record multiple and then you can have just multiple buttons I guess or if you wanted to kind of string through those actions that's an interesting one. Learn how to program Z script. <laughs> but I'm not the guy to teach you that. Um, also, now that you've had R8 for some time, what would you say are its pros? Uh, my workflow hasn't changed that much. All I've basically done is integrate the new R8 like Boolean operations into my general workflow. So, for example, we got a sphere here going to edit mode, make poly mesh 3D go through here and slice this up and now we can do you know what let's do a zero mesh with keep groups on adapt the size down to zero and go ahead and get some cleaner geometry here let's say i want to pass a boolean through here so i'm going to go to brush curve uh let's go to curve tube i suppose and we'll go ahead and hit uh, we'll start dragging this and we'll hold down shift and that'll go ahead and string it around here so let's say we want a boolean this shape out here it doesn't connect that's fine uh, so what I can do now is tap off to get that curve. I can go ahead and do, because I want to see inside of there, I'm going to go ahead and do split unmasked points. So I've got this one here and then this one selected. And the reason I did unmasked points is it's going to shoot it down here. So if I want to make this a start group, I can now go ahead and turn on my Boolean render, make this subtractive. And now I've got that already, you know, subtracted in my mesh here. So I can go through here and kind of make these changes. Um, now, if I wanted to go ahead and go into solo mode here, and let's say we wanted to do a complex panel line here, let's go ahead and do uh, group by normals again. And I'm gonna isolate, I guess this might work. So I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna do Q mesh. No, I'm gonna Q mesh, poly loop. Let's see if this will work. Just to make like a, you know, a in more interesting cut loop, cut line down here. So now when I hit, uh, go out of solo mode, and we turn off polyframe here, you're gonna see, oh, okay, now it's cutting in and also giving me like a compound shape inside there. Uh, if that's what I wanted, then I can go ahead, let's turn on D to go into dynamic preview on this one, and then we'll hit D to do dynamic preview on this one. That'll give me a nice smooth transition here. And you know what, actually, let's fix this. I'm gonna go into solo mode here. It's bugging me. Do shift D and let's do uh, Q mesh a single poly. If I can kind of maybe clean this up here. Let's do a full step. Let's kind of snap this back here. That'll work. And then I'll mask this one. Turn my gizmo back on. There we go. And you just kind of move these back. Uh, same for this side here. We're going to Q mesh this poly back. Q mesh this poly back. If you hold down Control Alt, it'll go ahead and just unmask this, these points here. So Control Alt. And then I can hold down Alt and pop that right to the middle. So now uh, that'll be a little bit better here. So let's go ahead and do another group by normals because I know when I go to Z remesh this, I want these polygroups to be somewhat uh, good. So now if I go out of solo mode here, go to polyframe mode, I can hit D for dynamic subdivs. And let's go ahead and crease PG, which is under your crease menu. That'll crease your polygroups here. So Let's say I like this, I can go down here to my subtool menu, go to Boolean, dynamic subdivs, make Boolean mesh here. And then with our new Boolean mesh, now I can go through here and I can zero mesh this with keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, and then just zero mesh this thing to get new geometry that I can then go in and sculpt on. And then I can just continue to add compound Booleans to this thing to kind of cut these things out. So now I can hit, um, Let's go ahead and do another crease poly group, hit D. So here's a here's a more complex shape that's been zero meshed here. So if I want to, I can go through here and I can like Boolean these things or do any sort of, you know, mask. Let's go ahead and yeah, I guess we can a Q mesh poly group here. So we can kind of Z model some stuff in here. Or I can go into my, if I go into like my brushes here, uh, I think under hard surface H. Where's my hard surface stuff? There you go, hard surface stuff. Um, I have some hard surface stuff I've got off Gumroad that I can go through here and I can go like, oh, let's go to my uh, base shapes here. And instead of using alphas, what I basically did was convert those alphas into geo. So now I can go in here and have one brush for all my hard surface stuff. So I wanna go ahead and like sculpt out some shapes on here. I can do that. 
Uh, let's turn that intensity down. So I've got dynamic preview turned on. Um, if I want to go ahead and you know have dynamic turned on, go ahead and apply those subdivisions. And now I can go through here and start putting in some of these shapes here. Go ahead and smooth that down, or we can hold down Alt, or we can go to another shape here. And these are just 2D alphas. Is just a way to kind of put all of these into one mesh here. Uh, and then I can also combine this with the uh, live boolean here. So if I want to do a bunch of inserts, I'm going to go to append. Uh, it doesn't matter to append a sphere and I'm just going to go into transparency mode and I'm just going to scale the sphere way down, put it on the inside, make it subtractive. So now when I go to brush insert live booleans here, I can just go through here and let's say oh, I want to try this one. So I can dr drop this in and it's already subtractive, right? Uh, or I can hit W and I can kind of cycle through here and see if there's another one I want to kind of try out here. And there, you know, this one's a cool one here. Uh, what's another one? This one's a cool one here. So we can go ahead and uh, put these ones in here. If I want to see the dynamic preview, just hit D. That'll give my dynamic preview. And if I want to like, you know, move this around or whatever, feel free to do that. So pretty cool new stuff. Um, oh, I should probably Let's do this. So we were at the Pixelogic Download Center. I'm going to go to my YouTube channel. So just Google Pavlovich YouTube. Or Pav YouTube, I'm sure I'll bring it. Pav ZBrush or whatever. Uh, if you go here, you can go to my playlists. And you're going to see uh, ZBrush 4 8, what's new. Here's a, all the new stuff in ZBrush 4 8, give or take. 61 <laughs> videos. That's a lot of videos. All the cool new stuff you can do in Zebra Friday, and it's it's a bunch of little snippets, so you don't have to sit through one 40-minute video and try and remember where the stuff is. It's like here's a three-minute video on exactly this, and you can kind of go through it and it's organized and all that good stuff. Also, if you missed it, on my for the past two weeks, so I I, I stream on this channel every Tuesday morning from 4 a.m. PST to 6 a.m. PST. On my channel, I stream 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Thursdays. So this Thursday will be my my channel. We've been doing, if I go to live stream full episodes, here's the full episodes for my live stream, my personal live stream, and then live stream highlights. This is where I go through and just kind of, if there's anything interesting or nice and compact, I can kind of just snip out. I'll go into Twitch and just snip it out and then throw it on YouTube. So there's a bunch of really cool, I, I, maybe it's not cool, maybe it's dumb, but there's a bunch of stuff in here that I do uh, that's just little snippets. So, you know, here's, here's you know, hard surface excerpt right here. You can go watch that. And it's a bunch of hard surface techniques. Or if you want to make a robot or throw it into Keyshot or Painter or whatever, you can do that. Um, but for the last two weeks, we've been doing the ZBrush Guide stylized rendering from um, www.zbrushguides.com. So I went through and we just did a ton of cool matcap stuff. So for example, if I wanted this to look like a comic book, you can go to zebrashguides.com tutorials and there's a free e-guide and that takes you through the matcap stuff. So I basically made a video companion to that PDF. Uh, so now we can go through here and uh, I'm just going to hit the comma key. We're going to go to material and we've got a whole bunch of comic stylized rendering. So we can give it like an ink shader look here. So look at this. Oh my God, I'm a real artist because now I have a little Death Star that I can go and put into my comic book. I can also go through here and I can render this thing with shadows if I want to and I can change the light position. I can also go into my material settings here and we can do, <clears throat> excuse me, we can go into the modifiers here and there's an S3 we can turn on for a little bit uh, more intense ink outline here and you can t go to this setting here. Let's go ahead and select that and we'll like change the orientation of that light maybe. So we can kind of just swing that around. All sorts of really cool stuff you can do. And also there's a bunch of uh, different types of things you can do. There's a bunch of different techniques. So we go through like matte cap and then going into Photoshop and bringing those in to give you a cool look. You want it to look like Batman. Here's classic Batman here. So if we want to say, go into our comma key, go to our tool brush and we'll bring up Batman here. You know what? This guy's probably a better Batman. Look at that. We got Batman. So now let's say I want to, this guy has subdivision levels. He's already subdivided up. Let's go ahead and so you're going to see, the more I subdivide, the smoother this rendering is going to be. So I can go through here and just kind of like, now, here's something I could do. So let's undo that one. Let's see if this works. Let's undo that one. Let's say I want to add subdivisions to all this stuff. Let's go to repeat it. C plugin. Re now, if I want to clean it up here, I can go to, you know what, I'm not, I know I'm not going to be using UVs, for example. I want to go ahead and do delete all 
UVW coordinates from all subtools. Boom, done. Uh, let's say I also want to go here to repeat it. And I want to go to record new. I'm going to hit control D. It's going to subdivide. I'm going to end record. I'm going to name this subdivide. I'm going to go repeat to all. And that'll go through and give each subdivision, each object, it's another subdivision. Cool. So I don't have to go through here if I want to get this one more. There we go. So now uh, what I can do here is I can alt tap this one. And it, as I'm doing this, it's replacing the mat cap with a new object. It's the same thing as going to load and it's going to just load over a material. So if I want to replace red wax, I can do that. Go into my comma key, go to my materials here, and we'll go and grab like um, this skin here. And now with this one selected, we can go ahead and do MRGB color fill object. And then we can tap this one. And let's say we want that one to look like Batman. And then we'll go to color fill object. And actually, you know what? I want to make this guy look like the Hulk. So I'm going to take this material. I'm going to select that material by just dragging out of the material selection and picking it. And then with that one selected, I can go ahead and grab that green. There we go. So now, and I, you know, I can go through here and I can hit BPR, I can render, it'll give me my cast shadows here. There we go. And give me a little more, you know, BPR with the sub pixel. I turn it down to zero for demo purposes, but you can turn that up to give you more anti-aliasing. So, cool stuff. Um, what does Z-Repeat do for a person? I still don't get it. So all, re all Z-Repeat does is you record a macro. So just like we did, you know, hit Control-D to subdivide. And if I want to subdivide all my subtools, like select, subdivide, select, subdivide, select, subdivide, select, subdivide. Instead of doing that, you just go Z-Repeat it and then make a, you're basically making a quick macro and then you're re uh, applying whatever you did to all your subtools. Uh, how do you close the stroke? Always happens. I don't know how to fix it. I uh, Let me see. So if we go through here, I'm going to try something. Let's turn off light boolean. We don't need that anymore. Let's go to sphere here. Edit. Uh, it looks like I killed my matcap. We'll go matcap pearl. Now on here, let's go ahead and do make poly mesh 3D, control shift, slice. Now if I do, let me try another brush here. I'm going to go to brush. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, LM, and we want to do simple tube. Let's see if this one works. So now, if I do hold down shift, okay, this one actually overlaps a little bit. So this one closes. Um, let's try BC brush curve tube. And we do this one, it closes. <laughs> Great, now I can't. Uh, there we go. Okay, so it's not closed. So if I go through here and drag, it looks like it actually twisted underneath. Maybe that's my bad. There we go. Okay, so I guess just be more careful um, when you're dragging out maybe. And if you don't want to drag it out and it's causing you problems, you can also go up here to stroke. Uh, where to go? There it is. And then curve. Just hold down shift and you can open up all these menus. We can do curve by border, polygroups, creased edges. Or you can do all of them. doesn't really matter. Or if you just want to do one, you can do like curve uh, polygroups. And that'll frame your mesh. And then you can go through here and tap. And it should. Yeah, curve tube worked fine that time. Um, if I go to my brushes here, we got the simple tube I had. Okay, this one didn't close. So if we click and drag here, it doesn't want to close. Trying to think off the top of my head. I mean, if I'm if I'm just want a quick fix, I would just go down here to move, and then under the brush settings here, you can go to. You can either I I tend to do the brush settings version, which is going to here, going to auto masking, turn on topological, turn my range down, and then I can just tap this button on and off. Uh, you can also hit B T. Uh, no. B, M, and then T is move topological. That'll just do what I just did for you. And then you can go through here and you just kind of like so. Um, that's, not the, that's not the best thing. I wonder, seems like there's a more elegant solution that's not coming to my brain, which doesn't surprise me. But um, if one does, let me know, or that might be a good ass ZBrush. Uh, I mean, what you also can do, um, you can go through here, and we can do 
select lasso. Okay, so let's go ahead and do split uh, mass points. That'll keep this one selected. Now, if I split something, what I tend to do is go up here and delete my history out, and then go ahead and delete hidden, and now we can go through here. If we want to actually have it closed, because it's not going to close your mesh, you can go in here, you can go to like bridge two holes, and then click here, click here, and then you can kind of dial that in. And then if you want to, you can go in here, add your edge, and you can, um, actually, you know what? Let's try this. So let's grab this one, go to insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and now we're gonna go to insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. And now when you put in an edge loop here, uh, it's gonna inflate it, duh. Okay, so let's try this. Let's go ahead and do a mask edge loop complete, W, and then we can just throw that right in the middle and just, I don't know, not the best solution I suppose, but I go ahead and close your object off for real. It won't be like an overlap on your curve brush, which is I think all a curve brush is going to do. A ray mesh will close it for you, but that's not really applicable here. Hmm. I don't know. That's a good one. Uh cool. Oh, thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the link, Seagull. Uh can I send you that mat cap? No. But you can go to, uh, let me see, zbrushguides.com. Go here to tutorials, ebooks. And this is Pablo Munoz Gomez, Poblander. And if you go here, where's the stylized rendering? Uh, oh, a guide to zbrush stylized render. It's not, uh, you can get it now, and that'll have a all the resources for all of these things here. So. When you, yeah, when you go in here, and I just load them up in here, but you can also just load them so you can go to comic style rendering here. And it's so cool. It's so fun. I love it. So now we got we can hit D to dynamically subdivide this thing. Uh, what else can we do? On this one here, let's go ahead and, you know what, I'm going to make this one. Again, we'll do, we'll do this again. This one, my start group. This one is a subtractive mesh here. Uh, while this is subtractive here, we got our live Boolean on. Um, let's go ahead and D. Let's go ahead and scale this down. So I'm going to do a size deformation. We'll scale this down. Whoop. And then with this one active, we can go to like brush insert. Let's go ahead and make our Death Star again. I'm going to hit M this time to go ahead and grab exactly what I need. And now I can just kind of pop that one in there. And is there any other cool? Okay, that's fine. So we've got our Death Star. Instant Death Star. So now what we can do is if you want to like make a comic book Death Star, let's go ahead and uh, we can just replace this one here. So here's our Hulk one. Let's go ahead and hit D for dynamic preview on that one. Give us the nice smooth look here. And now we can go into our comma key material and we'll just do the ink shader here. And now we can go into our ba -ba -beep, boop, 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 material and then turn on S S3. I like the S3, it's got that deep, deep ink. Cool, oh, and he also has a bunch of other cool stuff. So you're gonna see with these, uh, we go back to Batman here. You're gonna see what this is doing is taking this image and lighting our object. So you can make these in ZBrush, you can make these in Photoshop, you can import them in as a texture. Um, there's also a bunch of other texture options in here. So if I swap this one out with like this one, now it's using that image to do it. If I do it with this one, that's another cool one. Uh, it'll use the star image. Uh, now this one has some weird uh, stuff going on. It's kind of pinching this. So you, this, uh, the video and the, the PDF talks all about that. Let's go ahead and just grab uh, matcap chalk here. And now we'll switch this one out with texture. And you're gonna see we're using the star texture to uh, grab these. You can also go into, let's see, let's go to texture import. Streaming, comic rendering, resources, textures, no, matcap images. So here's a bunch of just image files here. So we're gonna open all these. And now instead of loading in a new material, I can just go through these textures and just swap these out. So if I wanted to be like, here's one with a cool outline. Oh, look how cool that is. I am probably the world's best comic book artist now because all I have to do is go like, mm, blue Spidey, perfect, ship it cold case. I just go through these all day long. And of course, make your own. Oh, that's a cool one. Like a little, it's kind of got a Hellboy look going. That deep, deep kind of ink outline here. Now, if I do want to kind of orient this differently, like, okay, I want to change this. You can go into orientation here and you can kind of spin this around. So we can go ahead and like swing this around. So let's say the sun is down here. You can spin those around and just reorient the stuff. A lot of cool stuff you can do. Pastel. 
steps to hell, red spidey. And then if you want to take the orientation back, just tap zero and zero, and that'll go ahead and reset that. So. Cool, cool, anything I miss? Cool, awesome, oh yeah, straight there, even better. Uh, thank you, Seagull. Nice, and uh, yeah, that's the other thing too, is it is fairly simple to do, um, let's do, okay, so I've got this one selected. Let's have a little bit more fun. So this is my not preview render here. I'm gonna go back to Matt Cat Pearl here. Let's go to, let's see, I already have one made, brush. I th this is one of those demos that I know I've done before. Uh, let's see if I can save a little bit of time here. Although I guess, uh, what do I need to save time for? You guys aren't going anywhere. Let's do, do I have a hair? I'm really bad at my alphabet lately. Goodness. Okay, so uh, A, B, F, G, H, hard surface. I guess I don't. Oh, you know what? When I migrated everything over, I think I skipped some stuff. So let's do this. Head of edit mode, control N. Um, Actually, no, we can just use a strap brush. I think that'll work. Go into edit mode, hit F. So hey, let's go to brush, curve, strap. And you're gonna see when you use curve strap, as uh, the intensity is 25, crank that up to 100. And uh, curve strap, 25. Oh, that's why it looks like a strap, because it's that. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna change the profile of this thing if I can remember how to. So stroke. <sighs> You know what? It's probably under brush. Let's try brush. So there's two things that go on with curve brushes. It's your stroke and then your brush modifiers have a lot of interesting things here. So the brush modifier is set to four strength. Hmm. There's a way to... Let's go to brush curve tube. Okay, the brush modifier is set to 20. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's because... There I go. Okay, so... Interesting. So with the brushed curve tube, you can take this one, take the brush modifier down to four, and then you update this, that'll turn it into a cube. So that's one thing you can do to get like just more cube hair out of this thing. Uh, but you can also go into curve, uh, not curve tube. So I'm gonna change this one back to 20, or you can change it to 12 or whatever you wanna do. And now it'll be round again. Uh, we can also go to brush curve snap, and now you see the brush modifier set to four. The reason why it was turning up round and kind of threw me off is because I had dynamic turned on. So I'm gonna do shift D, and now what we can do is you're also gonna see that the Z intensity is, I think, set by 25 at default, so it's thin. Crank it up to 100, and now they're gonna be square. Now the thing we can do is, let's make some super cyan hair. We're gonna go to uh, turn on intensity and size with this curve fall off here, you're gonna see it's gonna go from thin to thick. <clears throat> That's controlled by this curve. Let's go from, <clears throat> excuse me, thick to thin. And you don't have to go to razor thin. You can go to like pretty thin, which is what I usually tend to do. There we go. So we can also go in here to here, we can go as line and we can turn off bend and snap if you want to. And you can just drag these things out. It's like, rah, just go crazy. Uh, you can also make your brush size bigger. So if you wanted to, you can go through here and you can also use this to populate. If you want to do it manually, you can just go through here and then tap off and go here, tap off, go here, tap off, go here, tap off. Now, as you're doing this here, you can go, you can go through here. If you have, you can make your brush size bigger. You can also go in here and turn on bend and that'll go ahead and allow you to bend that curve. <clears throat> you can also tap off and then go in here with your move brush and just kind of move these things around individually, and if you want to, you can grab all these hairs, control shift A, visibility, split hidden, make them into their own sub tool, go in here, do a poly groups, auto groups, and then when we go into our move brush here, you can go to auto masking, and we can do mask by poly groups up to 100, and now we can move these around, or if they're all one poly group, you can turn, you can have topological on, and then whenever the first one you click, it'll go ahead and do this. Um, probably, but but having said all that, let's go ahead and delete that. I have a better way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a patch of crazy hair on the back of this thing. So I'm gonna duplicate this one off. I'm gonna hold down control. We're gonna mask where we want that to go. And it looks like curve mode got turned on for my mask brush. If your brush to start doing something weird, just go to brush. You can reset what's currently selected. Or I'm gonna reset all my brushes here. And now when I hold down control, we'll go ahead and mask this part out here and then we can hit control W. And now you can use fiber mesh for this if you want to. So for example, you can go in here to your 
mesh, 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 mesh. <laughs> fiber mesh is right here. So now we can Google like a preview of fiber mesh. And if you want to, you can go into your light box and see if there's one that's like kind of already doing what you want it to do. Which, eh, we'll keep it simple. We'll go ahead and go into modifiers here. We'll change our max uh, fibers down. I'm going to crank up the coverage here to make them wider. And we're also going to go in here to profile and change that to four to get boxes here. There we go. Now, if I want these to stick straight up, I'm going to change my gravity to negative one. And then I'll stick straight up from where my camera angle is here. There we go. Uh, and then you can change your length profile, your twist profile. We can also change the color here. So of course we're gonna wanna do like this to this, and then our length here. And you can kinda go through here and change your max fibers down. So that's one way to do it. Um, you can also do a nano mesh. So you can take these, all these polygons and put nano meshes on them. So let's go ahead and accept this one. We'll save this one out. So. Now we can go back to our ink drawing here and turn off polyframe. And now we've got ah, whatever that is. Uh, we can also go, let's go ahead and hide this one. So now that we have this one, we can, uh, and this is on our duplicate here, so we can hit Control W. We're going to isolate this one. We're going to go ahead and delete hidden geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Uh, let's go ahead and do a polish by features just to kind of smooth that out a little bit. And now we're going to go to Z Mesh. Under your zero mesh menu, we're going to do poly target poly. Uh, let's do half, the data size down to zero. And we'll just keep hitting this to kind of get as many squares as we want. Let's say that's the number of squares we want. So we're going to replace all of these with, uh, by default, if we go to B, Z, M, Z modeler, we can just drag out. Wait. Go hover over the face. Go to insert nano mesh and by default it is going to be a cube so if we do polygroup all perfect and now we can go into our nano mesh properties here and we can say okay i want the uh, width height okay i want the height profile to be 10 and then i want the height variance to kind of just change randomly here and then it's uh, you know it's all aligned to my surface normal it looks like everything's working okay so that's another option you can do trying to think and if you want to go ahead and say okay let's try let's see what this looks like one to mesh here there's not a whole lot of divisions in here so you could go okay let's try this I'm gonna go ahead and control shift click that one do delete hidden let's go grab instead of using the default one I'm going to hit M and I'm going to grab uh, I don't have it let's make a cube 3d and this one actually looks fine so I'm just getting more subdivisions along the side here so now what I can do is go back here and now we can go ahead and hit M we're gonna grab that cube 3d poly mesh 3d we just made and now we can drag that one out so now when I go over here to the nano mesh and we do height we can go ahead and do that oh you know what else I could have done Let's do it this way. Another thing you could have done is you can go and use the default. If I hit uh, M, it already replaced that. So cube 3D, the default, if I can do, you know what, let's do this. No, I don't want to initialize. Hmm, that's not going to save my brush. Okay, we'll do quick save. And then, okay, go into my Z modeler brush here. And then we're going to go to insert nano mesh, polygroup all, nano mesh properties, height, variance, and then. Uh, if I want to go ahead and modify this one, I can go in here to edit mesh and then I can go, okay, you know what? I want to hover over this one with my insert multiple edge loops and I just want to add more subdivisions here. Let's turn off interactive elevation. Interactive resolution I want on, interactive elevation I want off. There we go. And now I can go out of edit mesh. And now when I go one to mesh, 
although the wrong way. So <laughs> I'd have to reorient these things. Uh, but I think you guys get the point. So once you have all that, I can go through here. Let's go ahead and just delete this one. Delete it. All right, go out of solo mode here. So we've got our Death Star with our crazy hair. And turn that on. Go out of polyframe mode. Let's go ahead and hit D for our dynamic preview. Uh, you know what? For our dynamic, let's do, I don't want to do Q grid, but I do want to like crease polygroups here. And you know what? Let's do a crease tolerance just to keep those nice and square. And then I'm also going to do a crease level. So let's say crease levels at two, smooth side is at three. So that'll kind of give me a little beveled look here. And I can also go through here. You're going to see by default, I can't move the root. That's because I have auto mask fiber mesh turned on. Um, and I can also just go through here and just move all this stuff down. So now you can turn it back on for your move brush because that auto masked the root down. So now that we have that, we can go through here and I think we may have lost our um, mat caps here, but that's okay. Actually, no, we didn't. There we go. So now let's go ahead and turn our renderer back on and we'll hit D for dynamic preview, get that nice and smooth. There we go. Now let's say we want to change this to, uh, we'll go to chalk here. I'm going to go to my comma key. We're going to go to material, comic style rendering. We'll grab Hulk, and let's say for the fiber mesh here, we're going to have MRGB turned on. We're going to go to color, fill object, and let's go ahead and change that color. So on this one here, since I filled the hair, it's going to be a different material. If I go down here, you're going to see it's going to maintain that one. So now with this, I can go here and I can select this one. I can do, uh, we don't need stroke or brush anymore. What we need is material. And now we can go over here. And let's change that hue. So hue A, we can go over here and we can change it to, uh, let's see, we got that one selected, hue. What am I looking for here? Like a yellow, purple. I guess I was, kind of close here. Remember my color wheel? So we're getting into the oranges. And then saturation. And then intensity. There we go. So we can kind of turn this into a really intense yellow maybe. And I'm just doing a hue adjustment on here. So it's like the greens and the bluish blues are kind of changing. Uh, you can also go in here and just edit this texture in an external application as well. But I'm trying to do a hue A, hue B, just to kind of get like yellow and then maybe some orangish highlights here. Let's crank that intensity up. There we go. So now when you go back down here, that's already filled with this one. So now we got, um, oh, maybe it's not. MRGB, did I do it? Color fill. There we go. Something like that. Um, let's, okay, so there is, uh, you can, okay, so you can bake your matte caps to a mesh. Um, Joseph Drest made a matte cap baker plugin. That you can probably Google. I think it's for like Zebras 3.5, so it's a little bit dated. Um, but let's see how this translates because I know when I do take something over, although, you know what we're going to have to do first? We've got this one here. This one's additive. Let's make this into its own start group, and I'll take this one and I'll do this one subtractive here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do make our Boolean mesh here. So. We got this one here. Let's see. And for this one, I'm going to do color fill object here. So there's two things you can do in KeyShot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to render, external render key shot. And we'll send that over. We'll do a test because I know you can send, I usually send up sending Matt Cap Gray over there. But uh, if you can't do this, there, are, there is a workaround on KeyShot. I'll show you guys. Okay, so, oh, okay, yeah, it looks fine. Translated just fine. If it 
for some reason didn't. Um, what you can do is go to, let's go ahead and just start with, uh, we'll do hard shiny plastic for all of them. Okay, so we got hard shiny plastic here and it looks like my orientation was really weird. So what we can also do is I'm gonna right click this one. I'm going to do move and let's go ahead and just orient this guy a little better here. Nice. Okay, so we can also go in here to like tune. We can do tune outlines here or tune fill, tune fill blue, tune fill gray. Let's do tune outlines and we'll just drag that on here. And if you double click here, any one of these things that'll go in here, then now you can change um, contour width is in pixels here. So outline with multiplier. You can change that to get harsher outlines here. Part contour, outline with multiplier, part with multiplier. So that'll go in between the parts here. Let's go ahead and change it to like five. There we go. Okay. So you can kind of dial in these settings a little bit more. And let's change this one to five. There we go. So you want a really thick outline on the outside. You can change that. Um, shadow multiplier here. Uh, if we en enable environment shadows, That'll allow like cast shadows to kind of happen. Let's go ahead and change to an environment here. Studio. You can do cast shadows. You can also make your own lighting, which might be in this case a little bit maybe better. Let's go to edit, add geometry. Let's do a plane. Let's take this plane. And again, we're just going to move this part here. And we're going to go to environment over here. We're going to change that brightness to zero. And then on this plane, we're going to add, whoops, add an area light to our plane. What? And let's go ahead and create a ground plane. There we go. So this one might give you a little more control, I guess. If you don't want to see that, let's go ahead and turn off visible the camera. Okay, so that way you can kind of control that. And then if we double click this one here, shadow multiplier, turn that down. Okay, now you're getting the shading from your light source here to kind of dial that in and maybe get a little bit of that look you want. So you can do tune shading, but it does look like ZBrush sent it over just fine. If we just send this back over here. Oh, you know what? Okay, fine. Let's do. I'm trying to keep that. Let's see if this will do it. Hmm. Let's force it. Let's do render, key shot. So we'll render BPR. Okay, cool. Now we'll do a key shot render. Send it over. Hmm, I might have broke something. Okay, well. There it goes. All right, so yeah, it does look like the matte caps come right into key shot. So in this case, okay, what do we want? I guess it is getting some shadow. So you have to play with your light settings and your shadows. I don't know. I haven't played with that, but. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Let's turn on some glow on this thing. So this one, let's see if we can change this to, we can do an emissive here. So that'll kind of give us some glow. So if we go over here to environment, change that brightness down to zero, you're gonna see we can have an emissive glow. Um, we can also maybe, let's try again that area light here. No, not to that one, this one. And on this one, we'll go ahead and do, I guess we can change this to watts. It's gonna really blow it out though. Oh, not too bad. So let's take our environment here. Uh, let's go to our scene, let's rotate this thing back. We'll go ahead and move. Boy, I am lost in here. Where am I at? Brightness up. There we go. 
Okay, so let's turn the brightness all the way down. Just mostly down here. So now this one will kind of be self-illuminating here, maybe. So... Something like that. You'd guess you'd need stuff around here. And also probably if we go into our lighting... Dee, 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 dee. Camera. Is there a glow in here? We had lens effects, depth of field. Hmm. I'll have to play with that too. See if there's a way to kind of put some fake bloom in there. Some I haven't played with too much. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, so okay, cool. Thank you for the the key shot, uh, cell shaded appearance here. You can paint the variants too now. Awesome. Cool, the guys. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Um. Uh oh, I got something weird going on. Oh, okay, yeah. So, okay. So if I go in here to my filters, I can take my color key. So when I dial, uh, let's see if this works. Better. A little bit better. Yeah. Whenever I have a white background, you can see my pupils going through because I usually don't tune it that nicely. But when I go back to ZBrush. Everything's fine. How are we doing on time? Okay, we got about 30 minutes left. Cool, cool. All righty. Uh, what else did I want to do? So we've got, we went through here and we went through our Z plugins and we installed all the cool new Z plugins we went over. Uh, projection master, clean tool master, decimation master, nano tile textures. If you want to see more about nano tile textures, you can, there, you know, in a lot of these too, you can go through here, kill that one. Let's see, where did it go? There it is. Uh, sometimes there's a little, uh, little panel up here. For example, the ZBrush to Photoshop, you can click that and it'll kind of walk you through a little tutorial here. Uh, but for nano tile textures, uh, there's on my YouTube channel, there's a nano tile texture walkthrough. We basically just tile some seeds on a plane there and make it tileable. Um, and I'm sure there's Joseph Dress has a better uh, walkthrough on that one. I think Paul Gabriel did it too, or did one of those on the you know live stream or something like that. Uh, panel loop presets we went over, and that's another cool one here. So in fact, let's take this one. Let's go back to Matcap here. Hold down Shift, turn off Colorize. Let's see if we can go in the solo mode here. Because if I wanted to, I can grab this one. Let's duplicate this off. Because I wonder if I go through here and I go and I slice this one and I have everything else hidden. If I want to just put a panel cut line through here, I can go to my panel loop presets and we'll do this cut line here. Just on this one here, yes. And we go into solo mode, yeah, okay. So it might behave a little bit better. So this is a union, the union mesh. So there's gonna be a lot of really weird triangles in here. So before doing that, what I might be inclined to do is go through here and let's try a Ziri mesh, keep groups and target polygon count of same. So that'll kind of clean up my edge loops around my panel loops here. You can also go through and do like group loops, which will give you loops around your panel loops. Just to give it what you're basically looking for is this a little breathing room from these triangles that are going like this to the nice geometry that's going like this. It's going to cause a lot of little blah, 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 blah along that border edge right here. So if you can alleviate that either by inserting edge loops using groups loops or something like that, or Ziri meshing this thing, uh, it'll behave a little bit more predictably. So now when you go through here and we have this slice here and then we do the panel loop presets of this one here. Now when we bring everything back, uh, looks like this one did panel loop out. You're getting a slightly nicer result here, uh, but it's still doing something a little bit squirrely up there. Oh, you know what, let's go out of solo mode. We want to be in solo mode. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Although I would probably use this just for my base mesh creation. So it would be more of a workflow like sphere. And, you know, I, this is something I need to play with more. Uh, make poly mesh 3D. Panel loops. Panel loops. Presets. Fine. Yes. Okay. So now we've got these things. We can go like crease by poly group, hit D for dynamic preview. And then at this point, not after the fact, but now. I could go to, um, let's see, brush insert boolean m. 
and we can go ahead and grab our Death Star, insert that. Now I'm going to do, now if I do split mass points, it's going to keep this one at the top and then split this mass points down. What I want to do is do split unmass points and that'll put this one below it so I can go into subtractive here, turn on my Boolean render, and now, um, oh, <laughs> of course, this thing isn't solid, it's a panel, so, you know, be careful when you're doing this. So if we want to change that, let's go ahead and keep that one here. I'm going to modify this one. So what I'm going to do is, oh, I just deleted it. Don't hit delete. Do it again. You know what? This is a good exercise. So polymesh 3D, womp, womp, panel loops, womp, accept, yes, brush insert, uh, boolean, M, death star, yes, insert it, split, unmask, shoot it below. So now this one's subtractive, go into boolean render. Oh, it cuts through. Go ahead and go out of boolean render, hold down control shift. Let's grab this top one, control shift A, and we'll go ahead and split hidden. And now if I want to cap this one here to make it solid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to hold on control shift. I'm going to grab this piece here, control shift, drag to invert, grab this one, add it, invert that again, delete hidden. And now I can go through here. I can close holes. So I can go to like close convex hole. And that'll go ahead and do this. Or you can just do a close holes operation in your whatever. So now that I have these, this will be a start group. This will be additive, or I can make it its own start group. And now this one I'll move up, make it subtractive, go out of solo mode, Boolean render, and now it's solid. So now we can hit D on this one, D on this one, D on this one, make it nice and smooth. And um, was that all I was going to do? Yeah, so I would use panel loops to make my base mesh uh, before I got complicated. And then at this point, now I would go in here and do all of my fancy schmancy stuff. Like so. Make sense? Uh, question about me for a long time. Uh, so a question from Bazooka Plasma. How to use the panel loops when the model is going to be a model for the game? Um, those look like separate floating objects with seams. Yeah, so if I wanted to make a game res out of this object right here, uh, you're going to have to ask yourself, where is it going to be seen from? So when it comes to game res meshes, if it doesn't change the silhouette, probably no point in building it in. That's just wasted geometry. You're going to bake this to a texture. Or there's other certain types of games or certain situations where you wouldn't want to bake it to a texture. You'd want to build it in geometry because geometry is cheaper in a lot of scenarios than textures. So it can get really complicated. And you can also do procedural masking uh, that can be layered shader in your material and your engine. So you don't have to do a zero to one texture. You can get more fidelity without baking it down. So boy, going into production just gets really hairy real quick, doesn't it? That's why I like being in ZBrush and just making cool stuff. However, if you did want to game res this thing, um, you know, you've got your panel loops cut in here. So now you can just go ahead to make a game res. I would probably use Ziri Mesher, or if it's not going to animate, you can just decimate this thing. So what you can do is, let's say we want to uh, merge visible here. So now we've got this merged uh, one here. Oh, you know what? We can't do merge visible. We've got to do our Boolean first. Duh. Okay, so let's go ahead and say we want to make a Boolean mesh. That'll go ahead and merge visible for us here. And let's say we want to make this all one mesh for our uh, game here. Now, in this case, I don't even need this as a separate object. I mean, it's separate right now, but you know, if, if this is going to animate off, then sure, make it all a separate object and then you'll be able to see in here and you can put, uh, I don't know, something cool in there. A weapons cache. But uh, if this is not going to animate, it's not going to lift off, then I would just merge these things down. And then I would just go ahead and game res this thing. One easy way to game res is just to duplicate this thing off. And then you can just do like zero mesh. You can use these panel loops or these poly groups to go ahead and uh, make your life a little bit easier. If you want to uh, use zero mesher for your, I'm going to hold down control shift, control. Um, let's see what the easiest way to do this. To make your life a little bit easier here. Um, looks like I was a little bit sloppy when I inserted this one. Let's go ahead and do an auto groups here. There we go. So we can go to grab this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Make this all one polygroup here. And now what you can do is you can turn on, uh, when you go to zero mesh, you can turn on keep groups, turn your smooth groups down, target polygon count, and then this will give you, uh, I kept my adaptive size up, so it's going to give me probably excess 
polygons, which you wouldn't want to do in a game res. Um, and I also didn't dynamesh it, so it's going, it is going to keep this one separate. So let's say we did want to animate this. And probably what I would end up doing also is you can Z remesh and clean this up, or you can just go through and just manually retopologize all this stuff. It doesn't take you that long, and it'll give you a little bit more control, or use any topology program you want to. Um, so I didn't keep this in here, but we can do here if we want to make that one act a little bit nicer. Let's go ahead and do... I'm going to grab this middle one here and then invert that control shift X to expand. Hmm, still grabbing little stragglers here. Let's do group by normals. Still doesn't want to grab them. Let's see F. So what we can also do, and if you do want to make this all one contiguous piece, we can do the whole thing we were doing earlier with just dynameshing this thing into one piece, and then you can zero mesh this thing. And I can probably try and keep groups off, but we'll see how this does. So basically, it's all about when you're game resing, just like if you're going to cut a panel loop in in your high res, I don't see how that would, why you would bother turning that into something for your game res, unless you're doing super simple stuff where you could go in and like, well, let's remesh this panel loop to be lower because it would have to be fairly simple geometry like all this stuff as soon as you start cutting stuff in that adds complexity so now you're going to have to go in here and resolve how all these things change and if it's going to animate or bend an engine it's going to have to be decent topology so that when it deforms it deforms um, consistently or predictably I guess I should say so like panel loops for game res stuff I just use panel loops for high res, like all this stuff here. Let's go ahead and let's turn keep groups off and then we'll do zero measure here. Cause all we're really looking for is just an envelope to bake textures to, right? And how you want to make that's up to you. Like I said, you can manually topologize, you can do the zero measure, but panel loops really wouldn't play into that for me. I mean, you can slice stuff up and use those as control groups for zero measure, like we were kind of doing, but the more complex it is, the more I would be inclined to just manually retopologize this thing. Or you can start with a sphere and then cut out those problem areas. So here's a game res, right? This is something you would throw an engine and then you would bake this high res information to this low res. Let's turn off live boolean. Solo mode. There we go. So here's our game res. It's only 5,700 points. Here's our high res. It's 405,000. We can't put this into game, but we can put this one into game. We can bake that texture, call it a day. Uh, of course, there's a whole bunch of stuff you want to go through as far as smoothing groups and baking and normal maps and all that good stuff. But uh, Yes. Um, could you do quick con something hard surface? What have I been doing this whole time? Look at this beautiful, beautiful thing. That is some hard surface beautiful. And then we can ink shade it. And now it's a comic book grenade. Perfect. And then you can go ahead and like render this out and throw it over into Photoshop. And then you're pretty much done, right? Easy. Uh, but one thing we do need to hard surface. You know what? I've been meaning to preferences initialize. Let's see if we can't grab somebody we haven't oh you know what else I wanted to do I don't know maybe we'll do this moving forward I always get uh, if we want to do like fantasy characters which isn't any different than sci-fi characters honestly the only difference would be like the surface treatment like in on a sci-fi character that's you know looks like a Roomba or is very nice and plastic molded then sure the modeling is going to be a little bit different than say like a World of Warcraft shoulder pad but Fundamentally, it's no different. You make the basic shape, you put in bevels, or you add control loops, or you add some creasing, and then at the very end of the day, you go in with your orb cracks, or your Damien standard, or your flatten, or your mallet brush, and you cut little chunks out of it, and then you're done. And then you add chains, and then you add skulls, and then you add spikes, because it's fantasy, right? So maybe we can do a little bit of that. But one thing we've been doing is streaming smirky. Let's see where he left off on this guy. We were kind of having fun with this guy here. I've got a solo mode here. 
So let's say we want to start refining this guy here. So I'm going to go into Damien standard here. And while I'm working, if I'm doing like creature work, I tend to work very, very low on my Dynamesh properties here. So you see Dynamesh um, with project on. So if I turn project on and I Dynamesh, it's going to take a little bit longer. Oh, you know what? Did I turn dynamic on for this guy? No. Um, it's going to take longer, but if you're working at a super low resolution, it's not too bad. But in this case, I'm not working at a super low resolution. So I'm going to turn project off. That'll just dynamesh faster. Um, so then I can go through here and I'm just going to start, uh, you know what? Brush, reset all brushes. It's not acting like I'm expecting it to. Hmm. Okay, so at this point here, this is where I would go in and just like use the clay brush. And let's go ahead and add a quick alpha to here. And we can kind of just start. And you know, I'm going to use my standard brush here with the lazy radius turned off. We can kind of start just dialing in what I want this thing to look like. And if I want to work on the head separately, it's like I know I want it kind of embedded in here and kind of rotating around. He's kind of like got a hunched shoulder look. I can just go ahead and just grab him out of there with my visibility here. Let's go into solo mode. And let's say I don't want any of this back piece here. That looks all right. And now I can go ahead and just do a split hidden, redynamesh him. That'll go ahead and close my holes if I want to. I can give myself a little more breathing room just by kind of pulling this back a little bit. And now I can go through here and you can smooth or you can whatever you want to do. It's still pretty loose, right? If you're getting those little hairy pieces there, let's go ahead and do a quick mirror and weld. I'll go ahead and trim. And now you can dynamesh this thing, close that hole. And then we just alt tap back here. And now we can just kind of start uh, playing a little bit with this. So now we can go through here. Let's go to preferences, edit, turn off a line cursor to surface here. And now we can just go through here and just start dialing in what we want our shapes to be here. Smooth, let's go to smooth stronger. And really the hard surface stuff is the easy part. That's just technique. That's just like, well, how do I problem solve this? Do I remesh it? Do I go in and Z modeler it? Do I go in and um, you know, I, I panel loops it? Do I bool live Boolean it and then Z remesh it? All of that stuff, you know, when you're first starting out, learning that stuff is like, oh my God, that's the hard part, right? Like, I just want to make this damn thing. And the hard part is like figuring out how to problem solve. And then we will get to the point where that's the easy part. The easy part is going, do I want a Z model or this, or do I want a Z remesh it, or do I want to go in and retopologize it? The hard part is what the hell am I making? That's the hard part. And that's always really truly going to be the hard part. The easy part's always going to be the tools. When you're first learning, it doesn't feel like that, but the hard parts like workflow can be kind of the hard part, depending on how much you care about that, which I'm, I'm a big proponent of workflow here. Like, you know, having an elegant, efficient workflow is important to me. Um, but also it's always like, well, what the heck is this guy? He kind of looks like a frog. Do I want that? I don't know. Do I want to maybe go into here and kind of, eh, now he's a smiling, he's a smirk. He's a little smirk mark. You know, he's kind of got a little smiley face. Maybe that's something I want to kind of play with. So now I go through here. <laughs> okay, I really like that for some reason. You know why? Because every time I do a hard surface thing for for work, it's always like mean, nitty gritty. He's he's a space marine that's going to chew bubble gum and kick your buns. And it's always the same, you know, 35-year-old white guy with a crew cut that's going to wreak havoc on the universe. Uh, but you don't see a whole lot of guys like this. So I don't know. I kind of like this. And then as we continue to Dynamesh, if you want to refine a little bit more, just crank that resolution up just a little bit. And then go in here with your Damien standard, hold down Alt. And like there's a million brushes out there. You can go through and download. You can find your favorite. Um, like I mentioned before, like orbs brushes are really popular. Um, trying to remember there's another one that every a lot of people like to use I see a lot in tutorials where they go through and it's it's kind of like you know what maybe I have it um, brush 
I might have it somewhere. You know what? I might not have migrated it over. If I don't use it a lot, I tend not to migrate things over during between um, versions. Yeah, that's a tough one. I'll have to track that down. I even forget what it's called. Um, bu -bu -bu, cool. Oh, that's another. Yeah, so for the hard surface stuff, if I wanted to be like, okay, you know what? <laughs> this guy's cracking me up. Okay, so let's say I want to put something in here. It's going to be like a little canister. Like, uh, you know what? Maybe it's like a beer helmet, and then he puts his beer in here, but it's like sci-fi beer. It's like futuristic beer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little insert in here. So what we can do is we can start making that. And so what we're going to do, we're going to start with a cylinder 3D, go into edit mode, make a poly mesh 3D here, turn on poly frame. Oh, you know what? Probably shouldn't have poly mesh 3D because what I want to do, let's go back to our cylinder here. Before we go to make a poly mesh 3D, let's change this to like 12 just to simplify the shape and our V divides will crank down. And now we'll make it a poly mesh 3D. Now it gives me a little bit more control if I want to go in here, my Z modeler brush, insert multiple edge loops. Now I can kind of just dial those in. We can go through here. We can kind of start like beveling, edge loop complete. And let's say I want to add complexity to this thing here. So I'm going to go to inset polygroup all. I'm going to bring this in and we're going to do inset a region. So we can kind of bring this in. Now, if I want to put something in the middle of this thing, first of all, it's smoothing very uniformly. So what I'm going to do is do a crease poly group here. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to brush insert, uh, insert Boolean here. And I'm going to duplicate this one off because I'm going to steal something out of here. So with this one selected with W and in solo mode, I can kind of cycle through here and change this. I want to steal this um, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go swoop around. Oh, you know what? I didn't want that one. I wanted this one. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this piece right here and then do control shift S to shrink that. I'm going to go ahead and delete hidden and I'm going to go to B, create insert mesh new. And now I can go back to my cylinder. I don't need this anymore. Go back to my cylinder here, hit F. And now what I can do is I can let's do, I can pull this one in. So now if I control drag, control drag again, um, oops, we got two identical ones. Let's go ahead and do group by normals. And now I'm going to do control shift, control shift S to shrink, control W. And now when I pull this one in, I can go ahead and just have ZBrush resolve this for me. Um, I can also go in here and turn off the smooth modifier. So when it resolves it, it doesn't move stuff around. And I can also do it inverted. So I can hold down Alt and I can stuff it underneath there. So now it'll be kind of an inverted shape. And now I can go ahead and do a crease polygroup dynamic subdiv. And now I've got this kind of shape here. And you know what, just because we have them, let's go in here to like bevel, edge loop complete. And then we can kind of pull this one in. We'll do like Q mesh polygroup all. All right. And then we'll do another crease poly group here, dynamic. So we have now, let's go ahead and turn our floor on. I want to see, okay, we're Y up. Let's go ahead and hey, it doesn't really matter. So we've got our sci-fi beer can, right? So let's say we want to go ahead and put this on our guy. Now, instead of going here to go brush, create insert mesh new, and then going here and then going on here and going, okay, now you go in here and then I'm going to split this one off and now I'm going to hit D to dynamically set divide and now he can finally you know get beer delivered straight into his brain instead of doing that what I'm going to do is go to um, I have a custom menu that just has a simple plane so I'm just going to drop a plane in here and now we're going to do split on mass point so now we just have a plane sitting in there if I go into poly frame you're going to see just a plane right so instead of inserting that mesh, what I'm going to do is go down here to nano mesh. And on this mesh here, if we go here, I'm going to go into my Z modeler brush and I'm going to go to insert, insert nano mesh, single poly. And I'm just going to drag that out. Now it's a cube. I'm going to hit M and I'm going to grab that poly cylinder here and drag that out. Now I'm going to need to fix this orientation. It's all over the place. One way to do that is to go to our modified topology, geometry, modified topology, and we can do um, a line edge or 
Let's do a quick mirror and weld. Or we can try going down here to alignment, align to normal. There we go. And now we can do our X rotation should be negative 90. And I want this to fit, no, proportional size of one. Let's scale that down a little bit. And it looks like we need to offset. There we go. Oh, Z offset was up. So Z offset of zero. The reason I'm doing all that is so, and you know what, let's offset that a little bit too. So I can do, or I can change the height on the fly or the length on the fly if I want to, because it's just a nano mesh or the width. So if you want to like, you know what, I want to change the length a little bit, and I want to Y offset, just to kind of pull that out away from that plane a little bit. Cool. Now, all I need to do if I want to make changes to that, since if it was an insert mesh brush, I would just have to go back to here and start cutting this in. Uh, because it's a nano mesh, I can just click on here. And if I go over here to solo, you're going to see it's just a plane sitting there with an instance sitting uh, poking out of it. Uh, I can do show placement, turn that off, and that'll get rid of that plane, uh, which for me doesn't really bother me because it's kind of embedded in his head. Um, another thing we can do is we want to edit this thing. It's going to edit mesh. And now we can go into solo mode here. And it's like, you know what? I also want to do something else. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to uh, inset polygroup all. I'm going to inset this. And then I'm going to inset polygroup all each poly. And we'll do an inset here. And now I'm going to go to Q mesh polygroup all. I'm going to push this back here. So now when we do our shape here, it's going to look like that. Let's also do another crease polygroup here. So now that I've done that, I can go out of edit mesh mode. And now that thing's updated. So now I don't have to sit there and go, well, let me edit these insert mesh brushes I made or edit my insert mesh brush and make a new one. Um, it's just kind of sitting there. And then when I'm ready, I could make that into an insert mesh brush. And when this is done, at that point, I could do either inventory one to mesh or I can just go up here to geometry, uh, convert BPR to geo. And that'll go ahead and convert that. I can get rid of that plane. I don't need that anymore. Delete hidden. Now I can hit D for dynamic subdiv. Now we've got is beer helmet working? And now I can go about that, that back through here and just kind of sculpt it up. Let's go ahead and give him. Now, I kind of make it look like I'm putting a creature inside here with a helmet, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but if I want to keep this more robotic, I can go in here and like brush insert um, or alt E M. Let's grab a cylinder. If I want this to always come out forward towards me, one easy way to do that is going here to your picker menu, orientation, and just click this little thing on, and that'll just drag straight out at you. You can turn that off. We'll do once, and then drag this out, make it thicker. And if you want to, you just dynamesh all that together, if this is just more of like a sculpting tool. Uh, another cool one you might like is if we go into brush, what am I thinking, trim, trim hole. So this one is camera based too. So you can like go from the front and you can just trim a hole straight back or you can hold down alt and pull a hole straight forward or you can go to the side and kind of trim straight back to kind of put like little holes in there. Or if you or if you just want to kind of use the clay brush as well, you can just kind of knock these back. But that's more of like surface normal. Trim brush. Like I said, the um, the easy part is figuring out how to make something, but the hard part is what are you making? At least for me. That's where I could spend literally months just doing what I'm doing now. And at the end of the day going, you know what? I don't like any of this. So I'm just gonna slice that out. And now that I have that, I can be like, oh, you know, that'd be cool. Let's go ahead and throw a cube in there. Let me go ahead and split mass points here and let's go ahead and scale this down let's do a quick mirror and weld and now because I'm splitting stuff off I'm going to delete all the history off my subtools here and you know what let's go ahead and just dynamesh this it's already inherited the dynamesh resolution so now I can go through here I can start clipping this back and we can go through here and like now do you have to dynamesh no you can z model that shape but I don't know what shape I'm making so I'm not going to spend a lot of time z modeling something that I don't know what it is. Your mileage may vary. You may prefer to Z model something because you know it's gonna save you time later. I tend towards uh, figuring out what I wanna make first and then deciding 
do I want to go through and uh, make those decisions after the fact. Um, another thing you can use is you can use like insert mesh brush libraries, kit bashing. Um, like I said before, I've got those brushes I like to use. You can see brush that I got off Gumroad and I converted them from just alphas to like multi alphas here. So now we can just load these up. I converted the alphas to geo just using, oh, you know, I guess I can show you that too. So you can go through here and just find like cool shapes here. And it's still super low res, so it's not going to be great. But you can go through here and just, you're, I'm just looking for like cool ideas, right? Or cool forms or cool features or interesting stuff I can kind of add to him. So it's like, oh, okay, maybe that'll work. And then if I wanted to put a real handle in here, I don't need that in there, that fake handle. Or you can leave it in there for like approvals if you want to be like, oh, is this, does, this, uh, does a handle in there work? And if it does, then you go in there and make your real handle. And let's say just for fun, I can go in here and just pop a cylinder that way. Let's turn on local sims. When I scale this, it behaves a little bit more like I would expect. And I can also go ahead and split this one. And now at this one here, I can go ahead and mask this bottom one here or mask, unmask, and then hit W, go to my unmatched mess center, which it already is. And now I can just uniformly scale this up. And then we can do like uh, crease tolerance here, dynamic turned on, and that'll kind of smooth the shape out. And if I want to make this all part of the one mesh here, I can just merge it back down. Let's put this one above so it inherits that properties here. So merge this one down and now it's all dynamesh together. And then you can go through here and like H polish this a little bit maybe. Or go in here with your clay brush. Brush insert model tool kit. It's a big one, 120. There we go. Um, and you can also, you can scroll through up here. I tend to, I'm just more used to going in here and grabbing what I need. So use whatever one makes most sense to you. And now I can go ahead and split that one here and go back here and now we can be like okay I'll actually you wanted a panel line here maybe no maybe here I want a panel line let's go ahead and increase that intensity turn off lazy radius that's what and I'm not working at a high res because again I don't know what I'm making now I do have a concept of this guy that I probably should be looking at here um, you can also do you can hold down kind of mask areas out and it looks like I need to huh okay when in doubt hold down control brush reset current brush there we go so we can kind of mask this out here invert that and you can also try maybe clip circle holding down alt and kind of see if that'll give you any interesting shapes here Or if you don't like it, just ring, undo, back out. All right, it's eight o'clock. Any last, last, and you know what? I'll, I'll go ahead and I have my streaming topics folder over here. So if I missed anything, sorry I didn't get to it, but cool. Um, when you were, uh, Bland's asked, when you're working on a project, do you make brushes on the fly all the time, especially if it's something simple and that I'm, it's just kind of on the fly, like, like I said, on the fly. Um, if it's something I'm not going to use very much, or just like I did there where I just chopped the back end of that off and inserted it, if I know I'm only going to do that once, I'm not going to bother making a beautiful brush I'm going to save for later. Uh, I'll just do it really quick, make an insert mesh brush or change brush settings. And oh, a little crash on uh, saving there. You know what? I pro you know what? <laughs> and when you got Keyshot running in the background, just hit pause. There's no point in having a, all these my CPU going to here, especially because ZBrush is kind of a CPU intensive program. Um, I'm going to allow my camera to the surface normal. Camera axis perpendicular to your surface, looking straight down at the surface. For instance, when I use project brush to push geometry to a flat surface. Camera, camera. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to do it. Yeah, if it's arbitrary, I'm not sure about that one. Let's see. I'm sure there's a elegant solution. I just might not know what it is. Make polymesh 3D. And let's say it's an arbitrary angle. So it's like this and like this. And you want to project it here. Because if it's if it's from straight on, just snap. Hold down shift and just snap it to the surface, obviously. Uh, but if it's 
more complicated than that, which I assume you're asking. It would be like if I go out of here with transpose maybe, if you hover over this little white circle, um, transpose line, oh, it doesn't give you any more, hold on control. Oh, you can't reposition the camera anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm -hmm. If I want to snap my camera to this plane, that would be a good one for Ask ZBrush. I, uh, how would I dictate a frame? I'm not sure about that one. I would almost be more inclined to move my object here or move my object flat so I can snap orthographically to it because I know that's looking straight on it. I'm not sure about that one. I uh, know sometimes when I use a rotation deformation menu, my symmetry goes out of alignment. Is that a common issue? Rotation from the deformation menu, symmetry goes out of alignment. So if we go in here and rotate, it shouldn't. Like if I do here, so if I do a quick mirror and weld, it's mirror and welded across the X symmetry. If I rotate this, oops, if I rotate this 90 degrees and do a mirror and weld, should still be down the middle. If you ever do need to, you can go in here to geometry uh, position and you can zero this out. So if you are, let's go Y here. If you are ever like, oh, I'm throwing out, I'm, now I do a mirror and weld that does this. Just go over here and do X position zero. And now you can do mirror weld. But I, I'd have to recreate that, I'm not sure. Um, a question about live booleans. Is it still possible to UV unwrap something that's Boolean? It seems like the geometry is kind of broken after a live Boolean. It's not broken, it's just uh, it's working as intended, which is in this case, it'll be my last one I go over. So if I go down, hold down control, and I go ahead and split, uh, unmask points, start group, end group. And for this one here, we'll go ahead and hit D and apply just to get something a little bit different here. And now if we do our Boolean render, everything's looking fine. Now we can go down here to Boolean dynamic. So to make Boolean mesh. And so here, what you, if you did want to unwrap this one, it would just be a matter of Z plugin, UV master, and then going in here to keep polygroup. So it's not symmetrical, then unwrap and then flatten, and you can kind of see um, oh, it's not keeping that one mesh here. So I wonder, is anything masked? Oh, you know what? I probably did something really bad there. So what you first thing you want to do is go to work on the clone so you don't accidentally bork your mesh here. And then, so I would assume you could do unwrap, flatten, but it's not keeping that poly group here. So unflatten, this is all one contiguous mesh. Unmask. Hmm. Not working as intended. Let me see if I can go down here to, or I would assume, unless I'm doing something wrong. Uh, let's see, Zero Mesh, same. Okay, so now we're going to go get polygroups on, unwrap, flatten. Okay, that works. Hmm. Hmm, that's a good one. I'm not sure. Give it a shot. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for showing up, everybody. Hope that was somewhat informative and fun. And uh, I'll catch you guys next Tuesday morning. Oh, am I? Actually, now that I say that, next Tuesday, I'm not going to be in town. I'm going to be at SIGGRAPH. So, yeah, and I won't be on my channel either. On Okay, so I'm skipping... Don't show up next Tuesday, don't show up next Thursday, but every Tuesday and Thursday, usually in the morning, I'll be here on my channel or on Pixel Electric's channel. Sorry about that, guys. Everybody. So, yeah. See you guys next week. Thanks for showing up. I won't be here next week. I'll be at SIGGRAPH, but I'll catch you guys on the flip side.